Hey boys and girls and welcome to Kids Corner. I'm so excited that you're here today. We are talking to one of the coolest guys I have ever met. I know that you have heard of this guy. His name is Joseph and he is a really neat guy. He went through a ton of stuff that he's going to tell us about. I can't wait for you to meet him. So get out your card from your box. It's the one with the fun looking coat on it because there's two Josephs as we know because we already met one of them. This one is Joseph with his fancy coat. So get out your card but before we meet Joseph, you know the drill. Stand up, stretch big and get ready because we're going to do a song. See you in a minute. Whether I'm driving in the car or shopping in the store Making mashed potatoes or sweeping up the floor Cleaning up my room or starting up the mower I'm gonna praise the Lord I'm gonna praise, 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 praise the Lord Praise, 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 praise the Lord I'm gonna praise, 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 praise the Lord I'm gonna praise the Lord Whether I'm dancing like a robot or reaching for the stars Running through a sprinkler or climbing monkey bars Swimming in a lake or rocking my guitar I'm gonna praise the Lord. I'm gonna praise, 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 praise the Lord. Praise, 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 praise the Lord. I'm gonna praise, 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 praise the Lord. I'm gonna praise the Lord. Everybody on the left, what you gonna do now? boys and girls and welcome back hopefully you did all the actions this week I bet you all are starting school again Do you know this is the first September in a really long time that I haven't been going back to school either I get to stay home well I don't get to stay home I get to go to work but I'm not going to school so I've been praying for each and every one of you as you go to school now uh, we need to do our memory verse today because next week, actually maybe the week after, we're going to do the draw. And as you've all been sending me your crafts and your videos of saying your memory verses, keep those coming in. I got quite a few and we're going to get all your names in the draw for a grand prize that I can get to you. If you don't go to the church, then I can still deliver it to you. So no problem. Just get me in those pictures and videos so we can get your name in the draw as many times as possible. So let's do today's memory verse. So here it is. It's another long one, but I know that you can do it. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. And that's found in Romans 8:28. Do you know what that means? That means that no matter what you go through, even if it's the hard stuff, God's going to use it for your good. So sometimes when we're going through really hard stuff and we, we're really unhappy, we can remember that God will use it to whether it helps us or helps others, he will use it. So just trust him. We're going to hear all about that from Joseph. All right, now repeat after me. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. And that's found in Romans 8.28. This is a really exciting verse, especially in times when things are hard and we've been going through 
people being sick all over the world. We know that God is going to use this for good for those who love him. That's a pretty exciting promise from God, isn't it? Let's read that together one more time. And it's found on your card, so you can write it down and remember it, so you can say it on video for me, okay? That would be great. Let's say it together. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Romans 8, 28. That's a really important verse for you to remember. So if you could memorize that and always keep it in your heart, then when things are hard, you'll know that God's going to use it no matter what. Now, we've learned our verse. Now we get to meet the coolest guy ever. Let's go hear what Joseph has to say about God using everything for good. Because you know what? Joseph is the perfect example for that. And I will talk to you after we meet Joseph. Hey, boys and girls. My name is Joseph. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about my story. Now, you're going to have to sit back and relax because my story is a little bit long. But I, I don't want to leave out any important parts. So bear with me as I tell you a little bit about what's happened to me and how I got to where I am today. So when I was a very young man, I was my father's favorite. And he made no bones about it. He bought me a fancy coat. He taught me lessons while my brothers, all older than me, were all out working in the fields. And they were very jealous. And you know, I didn't make it any better when I bragged about dreams I had and I bragged about my coat. But God did give, give me dreams way back then about sheaves of wheat bowing down to me and me being a star shining brighter than all the ones around me. I didn't really know what they meant at the time, but I knew that something important was coming and because I was so young and I didn't know any better, I certainly bragged about it a lot. You know how young men can be. Well, it turns out my brothers were more than a little bit jealous. They were a lot jealous. And they threw me into a well one evening. And they plotted to kill me the next day, apparently, but my brother Reuben wouldn't let them kill me, so instead they sold me into slavery. The people that they sold me to took, the, took me to Egypt, where I became a slave in Potiphar's house which sounds like a really good deal and it was. I worked really hard for them and I, I made it to the top slave and I, I, he really liked me and I did very well. God blessed my time there. But Potiphar's wife took a shining to me and because I wouldn't meet with her, she was married. I wouldn't have anything to do with her. She lied about me and said that I'd hurt her and I didn't. But Potiphar had no choice but to believe his wife, and I was thrown in jail. I was in jail for a long time, and there were a couple other people there with me, a baker and a cupbearer, and they had these dreams. You know, God gave me the interpretation of those dreams. He told me what would happen. So I was able to tell those people exactly what the dreams meant. One did not, um, one was not good news. He ended up dying, just as the dream foretold. And the other one went right back into his position as before, and he promised that he would tell Pharaoh of my telling of his dream. But he forgot. He got busy. But years later, I guess Pharaoh had dreams that were haunting him and no one could tell him what they meant. And that's when the cupbearer remembered that I had interpreted his dream. It wasn't really me who interpreted his dream. 
it was God who gave me that message to be able to, and to tell him what it meant. But either way, Pharaoh sent for me. And they cleaned me up. I was bathed and gave, given a new set of clothes because, well, I was in jail and I did not smell very nice. They took me before Pharaoh and Pharaoh told me of his dreams of fat cows and skinny cows and big grains and small ones. And I, and I prayed to God that he would give me the interpretation of those dreams. And you know what he did? It meant that they were going to have seven years of plenty where there would be tons of food and so much, so much that there would be a bountiful of amounts for everyone. And, but then there would be seven years of famine where there would be not enough food and not enough rain and people would starve. And Pharaoh was distressed and he wanted to do something to help the people. And you know, he was able to, I was able to talk to him about a plan about saving while there was lots of food so that we could give it back to the people when there wasn't enough. And it's funny, all of that time in jail and all of that time working for Potiphar, I learned so much and I grew as a person. God taught me so many lessons. It was amazing. And all of it brought me to this point where Pharaoh put me in charge. He put his ring on my hand. Can you even imagine going from jail to being like in charge and gathering food? What's, what's really interesting is that in the years of famine, when we were giving out food to the people, my brothers came looking for food, but they didn't recognize me. But I knew them right away. I was angry. I was hurt. I played a couple tricks on them. I wanted to see what they would do, and I wanted them to bring little Benjamin, because I had a little brother. But they fought for him, they protected him. I saw a different side to my brothers that I'd never seen before. And so I chose to reveal myself and forgive them. God called me to forgive them. And I was able to do that because I could see that God meant for all these things for good even though my brothers were jealous and they sold me. God knew where he needed me. God knew that he needed me to be in Egypt to help his people. And so here we are, second in command. And all my family were able to come to Egypt to move there. I saw my dad again. What a gift. God is so good. I hope you enjoyed my story. Now, Joseph had a really long story, huh? But wasn't it the coolest that although he went through some of the really hard stuff, like his brother selling him, can you even imagine that? And going to jail for something he didn't even do? That must have been really hard for Joseph. And yet he didn't get mad or bitter like some people do, but he trusted God with all of it. And just like in our memory verse, God used it all for good for Joseph. So Joseph was able to learn all kinds of lessons along the way, along that journey of becoming who God wanted him to be when God wanted him to be it. Now we talked about that on Sunday as well, didn't we? About having patience in the journey. So what we can do is know that even in things like Joseph, when things are really hard and we don't understand, we can trust God that he will work it out and use it for our good and for others' good too. Because sometimes when God walks us through something, we can tell others to give them hope in what difficult stuff they're going through. So have courage and know that God will use even the hard stuff all the time. Okay, we'll talk to you in a minute for craft time. 
Hey boys and girls and welcome to Craft Corner. I hope you all have your boxes. If you don't, you know you can still go get it quick. You can just push, push pause on the video and run and get it. But today we're just going to do some coloring. So we get out our crayons. I have a few crayons in my handy dandy little box. And we need to get out the picture that looks like this. And it has a number seven. Hey, I remember to write number seven on mine this week. See, number seven, and it has says Joseph the Dreamer. Because we just met Joseph, right? So we're going to get our picture out of the bag. So you just open it on up. I'm going to put my box to the side here. And get out my coloring page. I'm oh, just throwing the bag on the floor. And we can start coloring. You can color it however you want, but don't forget that Joseph's coat was called the coat of many colors. Because back then, most things were just dull colors because colored fabric was really, really expensive. So getting things of lots of colors was a big deal. And that's part of the reason why Joseph's brothers were so jealous of him because he had this fancy coat and they didn't get fancy coats. So it wasn't exactly fair, was it? No. So I'm gonna put some blue on my coat of many colors. And purple, cause there's pictures of grapes. So I might color the grapes purple. But grapes come in all different colors, don't they? You could color them green. Or you know what? You could color them whatever color you want because it's your picture. I'm going to put some more purple on mine. What's neat about these pictures is that they will all, although they all look the same, they'll look all different when we're done, right? Because we'll all color them our own special way. And I can't wait to see pictures of all of your pictures to get your names in the draw because we are going to do that draw very soon. I'm going to put some orange on mine because I want to put in lots of colors. I broke my orange, but the neat thing about broken crayons is that they still color. I'm sure there's a sermon in there somewhere about broken people and broken crayons, but that is for another day. But broken crayons still color really good, don't they? And I'm going to put some orange all around the grapes and we can make it however we want because it's our picture and Joseph was an absolutely amazing guy because you no matter what he went through which was a lot wasn't it he went through a ton of stuff no matter what he went through he still turned out to be a really nice guy and did the right thing by everyone around him. So that is awesome. And God, of course, just like our memory verse, because all things work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose, right? So God made all of the bad things that happened to Joseph all work together for his good. I bet you can hear noises in the background. That's my ice maker making funny noises while we color. I am almost done mine. How are you guys doing? I'm going to add some more red to mine because I am almost done. Hopefully you guys are making really nice pictures with yours as well. I've added red and orange and green and purple. Oh, and some yellow. I put some yellow in mine. And I think I am all done. So here's my picture and I can't wait to see yours. So please send me pictures so that I can add your name to the draw. Okay? We'll talk soon. Bye.